In just a few moments, you will hear from Adam Sandow, who created what is today one of the largest design media companies in the world, with a portfolio of holdings that include Interior Design Magazine, Lux Interiors and Design, Metropolis, and Design TV by Sandow, as well as Material Bank, the world's largest material marketplace for the architecture and design industry that has made the profession more efficient and sustainable, and in many cases, allow designers to continue working during the pandemic. Then you'll hear from Kia Weatherspoon, an advocate, educator, business leader, and an extraordinarily talented designer. Kia is the design voice of impact and change. Through her firm, Determined by Design, she creates elevated, equitable design solutions that defy design stereotypes and challenge the biases within national housing policies and practices. She is steadfast in allowing dignity to be the benchmark for design excellence in communities of color. Her work, legacy, and team are the direct reflections of the communities they serve and the future of the industry. Afterward, we will bestow both with the New York School of Interior Design's highest honor, the Honorary Doctorate of Fine Arts in Interior Design degree. Good morning, everyone. And thank you for inviting me to join you on this momentous day. It's truly a great honor. First, congratulations to all of today's graduates on your incredible achievement. I am so proud to be here celebrating alongside of all of you. Receiving this honorary doctorate from the New York School of Interior Design is incredibly exciting. NYSET is a school that I truly admire for the incredible history and accomplishments, contributions to our industry. Many years ago, I attended the University of Miami and I made a tough decision to leave and start my business. So this is actually my very first degree. My parents are gonna be incredibly proud. As I think about what everyone has accomplished and what will you will accomplish, I am so excited about the opportunities and possibilities. When I was asked to speak at this commencement address, my very first time, I thought long and hard about what I could talk about that would impart some wisdom and be interesting to everyone as you start this next chapter in your life. And it came to me incredibly quickly. It was actually powerful, the thought that you are all graduating during a once in a lifetime period in the world. We live in a world that's very different than when you began studying years ago. You've graduated during an incredibly pivotal time for our industry, the design industry. We've passed through a tsunami, the biggest global event that we'll have in our lifetimes. And we're in a new world today. Think about that. Think about that for a minute. COVID has changed everything. Even as we recover and as the world opens up, it's changed everything. And those changes that have occurred are massive shifts, massive shifts. Think about the way we'll work. Think about our homes. Think about the flexibility we've all started to enjoy. Think about working remotely. Think about the habits that we have all come to now be as part of our lives. You know, you even watch TikTok and you see kids who pick up and jump in a van and work from the road. And it's something that is just a shift that we all have to deal with. And as a designer, in this world, in this creative world we live in, your job is gonna be to interpret how these shifts will impact our lives and how you'll deliver solutions for the world. How you'll reshape work. What will the office look like? What is the future? What is the future of home and how will that change? What's important now maybe didn't matter years ago and today it's everything. You have to really think and bring solutions to these newfound problems. It's gonna be incredibly fascinating to see how your generation of designers interpret these seismic shifts that we're all living through. But this is an opportunity for you to reinvent the traditional to be incredibly creative in your thinking and to reimagine the spaces in which we live, work, and play. But you've got to do it in ways you couldn't have anticipated a little more than a year ago. Creativity is so important, more important than it's ever been. 
and you have a chance to influence everything through design. The mark you make will change how we all approach business, education, travel, healthcare, even public assembly. It is time so incredibly of opportunity and promise. And that is just what you have ahead. When I was your age, I was focused on being an entrepreneur. I was passionate and dedicated to being an entrepreneur. Everything I focused on was around reinventing the norm, using creativity to grow, everything. When you think of the future, you must never forget to approach every obstacle through the lens of innovation and creativity. It's never been more important. I've spent my whole life doing that, and there's always more to do. Three years ago, I looked at our industry again, and I began searching for ways to disrupt the norm, to change the daily lives and improve it of designers and architects. And the idea of Material Bank was born. It was a simple idea. It was extraordinarily complicated, and it shifted the way the design industry works. But I did it by thinking backwards. I started with the problem, and I focused on really unique, different ways to solve it. it sounds simple, but it's so important. I want you to always challenge yourselves to think creatively and always start with the problem first and work backwards. I've done this my entire life and I always start with the same question. Where are the pain points? Sometimes I ask if you had a magic wand, what would you fix in your industry? No matter what I'm thinking about, just dream for a minute and then work backwards and find those solutions, find those answers. You as young designers will need to solve lots of problems for your clients in ways maybe you can't even imagine today. Solving problems is essential and so is passion and drive. What's always served me well in hiring over a thousand people and in, in building this business was very simple. I always look for people that go a little far. They think differently. They really want to get ahead. There's always that special resume back when we had resumes. There's always that person that goes a little bit beyond. And I always found them to be the extra that becomes successful. Bringing positivity and passion is critical. And for me, passion and work ethic always wins out over a resume. I'll take that any day. When I find passionate, driven people, I truly believe they can accomplish anything. And that passion always leads to productivity. And being productive allows you to build and grow. And there's nothing like building something from nothing, a career, even a small project, building something from nothing is so, so rewarding. Being able to take your ideas and bring them to fruition, is actually addictive and you'll see that. Well, not all of you will wanna be entrepreneurs and build your own company. You're all creators. We are all creators. It is incumbent upon you to really find that niche that excites you. Without excitement, there's nothing. You've got to remember that success is to be happy in life and to feel productive. But to be successful at anything, passion outweighs experience and you can't forget that. You've got to bring that. Never underestimate positivity and drive. I've seen this over and over. The work you've accomplished at NYSED has prepared you for this, this incredibly new world that you're about to enter. And I'm so excited for each and every one of you. I urge you to take your love of design and the considerable talent you have and innovate, disrupt, cross lines, think differently, and never forget to focus on the problem you're trying to solve. I look forward to reading about all of the incredible successes you'll have in the future and the chance to set yourself apart in this incredible world. Think big and take calculated risks, something I've always done, and always bring passion to everything you do. I applaud you all for getting to this exciting point in your career, and I wish you nothing but the greatest of good fortune in all of your endeavors. Greetings, future of our industry. It is glorious to be here with you today, virtually. Um, I am excited. I am just humbled to say the least. And I want us to ground ourselves before we go any further, because I think sometimes we come to the end of things and we don't take pause to just recognize 
our accomplishments and that we've made it. And for me to be one of two honorary doctorate recipients this year, I need to take pause because this is sweet. And after this investment in your path and your profession that you just made, you need to take pause because it is sweet. So shall we take pause and a deep breath together for a moment? We ready? Okay, here we go. All right, um, we have a lot to cover in a little bit of time. And I had to think about really how I wanted to equip you and what message I wanted to provide you with as you start this path into our industry. And first and foremost, I, I, I want you to realize how I speak to you, how I come to you today, it's from a place of knowing our industry needs you. They need change agents. They need diverse voices. They need empathetic leaders. We need you. And to get us there, this is what I need you to do. First and foremost, note how I, 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 I greeted you as future of our industry. And I think that designation is very, very important because I didn't say future interior designer, future product rep, future whatever. I didn't define you by a title because I think oftentimes we use titles to define and justify what we do or don't do. But really, I need you to understand you are more than a title, you are more than a profession, and that first and foremost, you should always lead by your actions. And I learned that in my path as an interior designer, that one of the most important actions that I have to take daily on this path is to speak up when I see inequitable design outcomes, bias in the design process, not because of a project type, but because our craft requires that we design for all people. Which takes me to number two. Our profession, it should be a purpose. And I know that sounds really heady, depending on how old you are. That's a lot of weight to say, oh my God, this profession is supposed to be my purpose? Yes, yes. It is supposed to feel purposeful and intentional and impassioned and like joy. That way you can move through this industry knowing that every decision you make for the people and the communities that we design for, it is with a purpose. Number three. Do not let the labels that industry or the world has made define you. I think there are obvious labels that people can adhere to me when they see me. She's black. She's a woman. She has big hair. She has a loud personality. She has a strong voice. And depending on the circumstance or the room, those labels, can be seen as negatives. And I have learned the most valuable thing that I can do is lean into who I am, not defining myself by the labels of others, not defining whether or not, or quantifying them as good or bad, but leaning into being Kia first and foremost. Even when there are opportunities which leads me to point four, 
even when there are opportunities where I feel like I might have to go outside my comfort zone or maybe I'm leveling up. No matter how you progress, no matter how big the opportunity, always lean in to being the best version of yourself. Number five, to be purposeful, impactful in yourself, you must require rest. I know, especially these, this last year of going through the collegiate process during a global pandemic, I bet you didn't rest. I need you to reset. I need you to prioritize rest as you move throughout your profession. As you move throughout this career field, prioritize rest because rest is a form of empathy and you have to, you have to apply it to yourself. So when you are designing or working in this profession, you can be empathetic to others. Empathy is something we must embody every day in our craft. We have the honor if you follow the traditional interior designer's path. I need you to understand that interior design is the greatest form of empathy in practice. We just have to lean into it and lead with it. And finally, do not forget you have the agency of choice. And I know, and I know you can't say, oh, well, I can't, I can't, I do. I always have the agency of choice. Yes, you do. Everyone is telling you now you're graduating in a pandemic. There aren't jobs. No one's hired. That's a choice. It is a choice to adopt that scarcity mindset. Well, I just have to take whatever job I can get. I might be underpaid. It is a choice to begin this industry by devaluing your worth. It is a choice to not speak up when there are inequitable design decisions being made. It is a choice to stay in a practice or a firm or join a company where they don't celebrate equity, empathy, and diversity in an intentional way. It is a choice for you to not find joy in this path that you are about to embark on. I implore you, do not operate from a place of scarcity, but a place of knowing you chose a path that can, will, and impact people's lives for generations to come. Thank you. At this time, I am pleased to bestow upon both Adam Sandow and Kia Weatherspoon the Honorary Doctorate of Fine Arts with all the rights, privileges, and immunities appertaining thereto and present to you the doctoral hood for the discipline of interior design. I'd like to express my sincere gratitude to Drs. Sandow and Weatherspoon. We're grateful that they were able to join us virtually, and we look forward to welcoming them back to the campus at some point in the near future.